بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كلهم في الأخير تشرفت لين رابطة هذه جهة كده وهذا سومالي ماي تي في نتورك سومالي ماي تي في نتورك عاوة وحانو مرتئي نوغو أه مارغريت أندرسون كالهر أو كامي ده The House Speaker of مينيسورا وحان في ليا إن متقانا مربضا أتكو أركتين عقل كعاد إي هاوس مينيسوتا وحيا ربضا أت متقانا أوقبتي كوميونيتي دا سوماليات كودا غن قبل كان مينيسوتا ايان ربا مركو رأينا نكسو دوية استوديا هنا سومالي ماي تي في نتورك مركو رأي ماجد ولكم تو سومالي ماي تي في Thank you so much Levan It's very nice to be with you Although there are a lot of Somali communities are watching you right now and they're saying, oh, Margaret, she's in Somali My TV today. Mm -hmm. Oh, I mean, I know and they already hear that you are running as a governor and I hope, I mean, they're interested about to winning because they know what you have done for them. Let's come back to the questions. Um, in this, um, for the sake of Somali voters, you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself I'm so happy to tell the viewers a little bit about who I am mm -hmm. and uh, how I grew up. I grew up in a farming community. I grew up on a small farm, working really hard. It was a dairy farm, so milking cows, and mm -hmm. which is something that I did um, uh, on a regular basis. And I'm married. I have two children that attend Minneapolis public schools. Mm -hmm. One is a sophomore. He's going to be a junior actually next fall and a daughter who is a seventh grader going to be an eighth grader and so you know I really understand how families have to work hard together Absolutely. to make ends meet to make a good life for themselves mm -hmm. and to really deliver on the promise of what Minnesota can offer all of us um, I'm I'm really excited to be the DFL endorsed candidate for governor and you know I would be the first woman to be governor in the state but I think being a mom is probably a helpful thing in that wow. let's go back to the questions of the education stuff things like mm -hmm. Some other, some other Minnesotan community Somali students are filing behind K-12 education. So uh, in, those in, in the string, achievement gap with um, current of budget, of deficits, or accounting shift of payment. As a governor, how do you see a balance for the budget closed for the education achievement? Well, we have to invest in education. Like I said earlier, Public education is the backbone of democracy, including public charter schools, and being able to make sure that our kids are getting what they need. I think there's going to be no better fighter on behalf of our children than a mother in the governor's office who understands closing that achievement gap is going to be very important. You know, growing up in Minnesota, I went to public school. I went to public school um, in Mankato. And growing up, because of that great education, my dad had an eighth grade education. He did not even graduate from high school. And so every day he would talk about, um, as we would be doing chores on the farm, mm -hmm. he would ask me how school was going, and he would keep pushing me. Mm -hmm. There was always an expectation. I would graduate from high school. I would graduate from college. I, I went on then to go to Harvard and get a master's degree in the last few years here. And that great public education gave me a start that I cannot ever truly repay to the state of Minnesota. Now, it is wrong when we have such a large achievement gap between students of color and white majority students. And so one of the things that I'm going to do as governor as top priority is to put a new education funding formula in place. It's called the New Minnesota Miracle. And it's very important. It's going to be included in my first budget. It's going to have to be phased in. But it will make things more fair, equitable, and stable across the state. It will provide the resources to our kids in their classrooms. And we will be able to work to achieve achieve that uh, closing of that gap that has developed. Yeah. The other part that I think is really important is making sure that there's culturally appropriate curriculum Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. And we know how important that cultural match is. It's, it, it's particularly troubling to me as a mom of a son, and I'm sure it's troubling to a lot of parents out there and grandparents, that there has been this widening gap with boys mm -hmm. and boys of color across the state and Somali boys who are struggling to stay in school. We need to be working 
at a very high level in the state, in the State Department of Education, with our school districts, with large Somali populations, mm -hmm. to make sure that we are getting this right and helping kids stay in school, especially our young men. We need everyone. We're going to have a work shortage in the next 30 years right here in Minnesota, and so we need everyone to achieve at a really high level. That would be great, absolutely. وحقاك داود يا شقيمة هي قياة مضن وحن فيلا يا إنا تصفي عنا دوقة هشين وحا استوديا هنا ولي مرتي إنا وقوة مارغريد أندرسان كالهر أو رنتي أو أرديسا غوبرنر كا غوبل كان من السوطة الدبا هدي أدك داون يسيد هاتن سومالي ماي تي في وحالي ذنك الربا إن أد مارغريد بالت كا أدكينتان سيد توسنا أد أو معركتي أو دورتان هدي أي بيرا دو وحيلا دا وحيالا بدن أي أنك بدلي دونا ان اسبشالي كوميونيتا دا سوماليا دا وحان ربا ان آن هرمار غارسيو وح بدن آن او قبتو هدي اي بايرا دا وا قبل يوغو هريسا اي متقانا او اردا غوفنر كا ان اي متقانا اي ايمان دونتا هدي اي بايرا دا but hope is coming things is changing as Obama said وا وا first African American او بريسيدنتو نقضي and she will be the first women governor in Minnesota ان شاء الله هدي اي بايرا دا and Margaret we're still in the process of the questions um there's health issues about the community Somalis. They're facing about the problem of uh, child uh, autism, diabetes, as uh, the cost of health care is going out of uh, control. How do you uh, approach the, this problem, like this problem when you become as the governor? We have to approach the problems that we have systematically and really get to the bottom of what is happening. Mm -hmm. I know how troubling it is in the Somali community to have such a high rate of autism. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that we need to bring all the resources that we can and the resources meaning the education resources as well to be able to help us answer the question. So asking the University of Minnesota to do research with the Somali community is going to be important to me as governor mm -hmm. so that we can get to the bottom of it, working with the Department of Health and the Department of Human Services to see if we can identify what is going on. It's very important. Um, you know, I know many, many children and parents across the state and particularly uh, when we look at the rate of autism rising that we need to get a handle on this and be able to address it. Um, my own father was diabetic. He actually died of complications of diabetes so I know how it is important to work to stem the tide of the epidemic of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so good prevention is really important here. Making sure that people understand that if they can lose some weight, mm -hmm. that that can be a helpful thing. That the foods we eat, making sure there's more local and uh, more locally available foods available every single day to people. School lunches are important to that for young people. And so I think there's a number of things that can be done. I work at it myself. I have to say, you know, I, uh, I lost another 30 pounds, which is good, but I always have to work at this issue. And because diabetes is in my family, I need to work extra hard at the issue. And so I encourage everyone who has had an experience with the onset of diabetes in their family to take extra care and to really work hard, whether it's going for a walk around a block or two and getting out there and being more, more physically active, or you know, being able to also look at the foods that we're eating and, and really try to, to have as healthy of lifestyle as possible, because these healthcare costs are of concern. Now, I believe that the important thing is that all Minnesotans have health care, and so that's that's why I was fighting really hard at the end of this last session, standing up to bring these federal dollars, mm -hmm. Medicaid dollars, into the state of Minnesota. You know, it would have accounted for $1.4 billion mm -hmm. 